Welcome to Winning Conversations, a new podcast brought to you by Heritage of Faith. I'm Andy. And I'm Hannah. And we are super excited to sit down today with our friends Rebecca and Marshall Frazier. The Frasers have become part of our Heritage family over the past year, taking time out of missionary schedule to minister to our students on various occasions. They are the founders of Way Missions and are truly led by the Holy Spirit as they travel all over the world ministering to the hearts of the young and old through music, skits, and more. They are a joy, so let's dive into our conversation. So, hello, welcome. So happy to have you guys. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are y'all? We are good and better than good. Better than good. (laughs) So, we kind of just want to get to know you guys first. Um, Over this past weekend, um, or whenever it was, I had the pleasure of spending some time with your children at the HK Slumber Party. And I don't remember how the conversation got brought up, but we started talking about how you guys met, the two of you. And it was kind of a super precious story. Like they told it from your perspective. So I would like to hear both of yours, like how you guys met and all that. Sure. Well, I'll start, and then she'll jump in the middle. And <laughs> his do the end his of it. is way more fun. I, and I, I must just correct him. I'm a storyteller, <laughs> so it's lots of fun. And what's interesting, I told Pastor Justin about this. I've met ten couples that have a similar story. They're Becca and I, and I'd like to write that book someday. I just haven't done it yet, but I'd like to get it out there because people need to hear how God leads people. Yeah. And I personally believe it's a perfect one for everybody. I believe it's a perfect one. It's another sermon, but anyway, but anyway, but God will God lead you who to marry. He should, and he if wants to, because he loves your life. And if you marry the wrong one, it then becomes the right one. That's why it's all another, it's all good. So it's don't change, thing. right? Yeah. Don't change now, because you, it's all good. Anyway, anyway. so <laughs> when uh, I, I was engaged once, she was engaged like 10 times earlier, because guys liked her like crazy. Um, you know, just kidding. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I was the only guy her dad ever said yes to. And that's cool to me. The other, the other, I think two guys, two guys, I, I, I give her a hard time. But and they prayed me out of those. So really back wild. up. Um, <laughs> so I was engaged one of the time, and then God took me somewhere else. I, I didn't didn't marry the girl, of course. Um, and then um, and then so back up. I was in Bible school. This is where the story starts. I was in Bible school, going to Norway Hayes Bible School in Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, I'm there when I'm 20 years old, 21 years old, and she's 19 or 18. I saw I was 20. She was 18. And this is my first year in Bible school. She comes driving through there with her dad to go to Lee University. And as she drove by there, her dad says... As we're driving through Little Cleveland, he says, you know, I really should be taking you there. I said, Dad, I don't want to go to that little school. I want to go to a big school. I want to go to Lee. And he's like, well, that's where you should be going. And then we never talked about it again. So, but that's that's part of the aspect I'm trying to teach my kids. If you listen to your parents, God will bless your life a whole lot more doing your own thing. So let's not go there. Anyway, so <laughs> so anyway, and so fast forward after that, I got in the drama company. I met a girl, and we got engaged, and we didn't get married. And I moved around a few times, came back to Oklahoma again to minister in a church up in Gaiman, Oklahoma. And while I was there, my parents tried something with another girl. And that didn't work out. I didn't like her. That was a weird thing. She's cute, but it just didn't work out. That's a funny story. So then... I actually know her. She's taken our family Yeah, she's before. a cool girl. Cool girl. <laughs> neat, neat girl. But this wasn't for me. Yeah. And so fast forward to uh, Christmas. We got going for Christmas. My parents were workaholics. That's what my kids are workaholics. So on Christmas Day, they're still working for the church on Christmas Day, going on Don Clower's church, putting up stuff on Christmas Day. So I go down there. In comes this drop-dead, absolutely gorgeous girl. And she comes in with the pastor's son, and I'm they're married, right? Because why would you be together on Christmas Day if you're not married? So they're together, and she goes, this girl says, can you help me get something down from the shelf? I'm like, I flex my muscles. <laughs> yeah, I'll get something down. For you, you know. And I, and I think to myself, I'm never going to get someone that hot because, <laughs> because I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I'm not, you know, blah, 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 whatever it is. I'm nobody, whatever but it is. But you were tall. That's all I had yeah. going for me. <laughs> I was tall. So I was tall, tall and skinny. So that's all I had. I was skinny, really yeah. skinny back then. That's to quote your children, by the way. Yeah. Tall and skinny. Thank you yeah. very much, very much. And since my wife started cooking, I'm much bigger these days. But anyway, and so anyway, so then, um, um, so then, fast forward six months later, uh, seven months later in July, um, I come home uh, for July 4th. At this time, I'm at Jerry Savelle Ministries in Bible School. She's at Bible oh, School nice. at Jerry Savelle With Tim Flowers. We we're nice. both in school here. Oh, you got to tell that. That's part. why I was with him on on. Well, we were dating, but that's why I was with him on Christmas Day because we oh. were going to a revival that his dad was preaching the next week. Gotcha. And, and my parents were children's pastors at, at Jerry's Church. Church. At, at Jerry's Church. 
at Don, Don Clower's Clower. church, mm -hmm. and my dad. Oh well, um, I worked under his parents in children's ministry, and uh, that's where I served in church because you had to serve, mm -hmm. and um, and they were actually the next year going to be my internship directors for second year, um, and so um, I of course was happy to see them and whatever but I just kind of ignored their sons because I'm dating but Somebody. I noticed oh one of them's okay but every once in a while my dad would ask you oh yeah in uh, in March uh, we I was working in children's ministry and his dad said in the meantime I had already broken up with the other guy I was dating at the church so his dad says to me in the sound booth at children's church he goes How's it going? I said, well, you know, I'm just standing on Psalm 62. That's what somebody told me in Bible school, that I just need to keep everybody out of my business and, and read that every day. And I said, but I, so I'm not worried about it. God's got somebody better for me. He goes, he does, my third oldest son. And I said, yeah, sure, whatever, Mr. Frazier. He goes, well, you'll marry him, won't you? I said, sure, Mr. Frazier. Like, thinking he, I'm just pushing him away by saying that. Mm -hmm. He did this twice to me. So, fast forward to July. I come home from July 4th. My parents had a blind date with some girl. They tried this before. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Just some, what, who cares? I'll go with her. I have nothing else to do. Yeah. I'm a fun personality, so I'll do anything. I'll do anything with anybody because it's fun. And that's my personality. It's not that I'm a great guy, but if it's with somebody. <laughs> no. I told somebody the other day, I will clean toilets with somebody if I'm doing it with someone that's fun. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. think I'm a servant. No, I'm just having fun. I'm not trying to. That's, <laughs> And that's another Mark Gunger thing. I listen to him. He's awesome. Anyway, so anyway, and so uh, so in July, I go with, and we go to dinner, and she had her hair in a bun. She won't, I won't say she looked like Hannah. So my wife, she was pretty, like she was cute that night, but yeah. I didn't look at her as a drop dead, like I saw her back in December. December. Yeah. But she was cute. We had fun. Of course, I'm super nice. So we had, we went to, we went to, <laughs> not this wife, super nice. That's your wife. Mm -hmm. So we went out, we went to Bennigan's. I had Monte Cristo's. That was awesome. Nice. And we've always had, we try to have Monte Cristo every once in a while because something fun. And then we went to, uh, <laughs> went saw uh, Everest on the big IMAX. screen. IMAX. The Mount Everest thing. Cool, yeah. Here, and here and we talked the whole way through. I should have known the rest of my life I'll never get a movie in peace because she talks through every movie. I should have known that moment. <laughs> that was your sign. That was my sign. Listen, if we're getting married, don't talk through movies. Anyway, so, anyway, so that was fun. <laughs> oh, you loved it that <laughs> I, I, That night I did. We laughed. And we did. <laughs> Ever since then, not so much. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, so we, um, so then, um, then I said, come over the next day because you know the family area. We're gonna go ice skating, and so I'm super nice. So I, I, I didn't like love her, but I thought she was cute, yeah. right? But so I said, come over. I, I'm super nice. Yes. So all I remembered about him before he knocked on my door was that the Frasers had four sons. And I sure hope it's the one I think is good looking. The tall and skinny one. The yes. tall and skinny yeah. one. The tall and skinny right. one. No offense to my brother in laws. Just right. Saying, right. Just saying, yeah. he definitely does not look like them. Like in every family picture, he's the tall and skinny one. He looks like his dad, and nobody else right. looks like his dad. And it's all good. So, anyway, and so then, um, then we, um, so the next day she came over, and I pulled up in my brother's uh, drive, or uh, front of the house, street, and in pulls the other car, and out gets this girl. They had short shorts. The night before, she had safari out and hair in a bun, the whole thing. <laughs> this day, she gets out with short shorts. Her hair curled and long. And I'm like, who is this girl? I hope the girl from my report doesn't show up. I'm like, holy macaroni. <laughs> this girl. I don't, I don't connect these things that quick. I didn't. I was like, dude, she is hot. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And I was, I was in, I say lust. I make a joke. But I was in love. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is the girl for me. And uh, and so anyway, and so then it was the same girl, and I'm like, oh, she came back. She likes me. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't ignore me. And so then two nights later, we're on the phone. I didn't leave that day till like late. I didn't leave that day. We we're supposed to leave at noon. This is that day. And and, and my grandparents stayed around, and we had to drive back to Guyman, and I had to drive back from Guyman back to my town, yeah, Amarillo. Amarillo. We had to drive back back to Amarillo. And I had to go back to Guyman myself to get there. We didn't leave till five six o'clock that night, and I got in Guyman until like six seven o'clock in the morning, and I swung by the church because I wasn't supposed to minister that morning. So the pastor's son was coming to minister. Mm -hmm. I swung by the church, no on my door. My son gonna make it. You can preach. I'm like. Holy macaronis! I've yeah. got to preach now, and I'm like, okay, Jesus, we're gonna talk about my girlfriend. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh! So anyway, so I got back, ministered that morning, and two nights later, I'm on the phone with my wife, uh, phone with my now it's Rebecca now. That's girl I met so back in December, Christmas. Right. Now it's my now it's not my girlfriend yet. We're talking the phone right to yeah. her. We're on the phone talking to her. I said, hey, and you know, you're on the, when you're on the couch, you're laying on the couch, you're comfortable, just laying there, just relaxed, just comfortable. You let all your guard down. 
right? Like everything, I'm not even thinking correctly. I'm just talking. This gorgeous girl was talking on the phone. I'm like, I'm so excited. And, uh, and she goes to me, she says to me, um, oh, I said to her, oh, you're going to meet my friends. Okay, you'll meet them at the wedding. And he met us. You. You'll okay. meet her. You'll meet my friends at our wedding. Yeah. He's and like, it was like, I'm like, did I just say that? I'm like, <laughs> la, 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 la. come back, come back, come back. Wow. How did you take that? Because I know if I, if somebody told me that after knowing them for three days or like seeing them for three, I would have just ran. Like I would have just right. hung up um, the phone and right. like. Well, I think. Um, so what'd you do? what I do? Oh, I got quiet. And then she giggled. And then I started laughing. They started laughing. Like, thinking, did he just really say that? I'm like, whoo, she laughed. <laughs> and hang yeah. the phone up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. so, so I would say we talked a, a lot more than most people who date. Because when you date, you go out to dinner. It's yeah. just small talk. It's not wrong. To, no, but, but you go to the movies where right. you're not talking. Um, but we had to write letters and we had to talk on the phone. And so um, so we talked about everything. And, um, and I think that was a positive for us. Mm-hmm. Because... Um, we weren't caught up in the, um, I don't know, we, we were dating, but not like most people date. And yeah. so. And how long after did you get married? How many, how well, many months? Well, then a week later, we're getting serious, and she tells me her. As serious as you can get in a week. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're later. starting talking about marriage and stuff, which is a week later. Well, because here he's I brought it up, so. Yeah. But I'm asking all the questions. I'm a minister. Oh, well, so, hold on. I'm 25, and you're 27. Right, we're so not we like 19, 19 18. Yeah. But I said, do you want kids? How many kids? Do you correct your kids? Do you believe in prayer, tithing? The whole thing, because I'm ministering, so I know how to ask those questions. Yeah. What's your thought process there? Because I'm not going to marry was, someone that's opposite was marriage, of me. Right. He was marriage counseling me. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so a week later, we're talking, and she tells me about some things happened in her past. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I hung up the phone, and I said, well, she's not for me. So a week later, I'm mowing the grass, praying in tongues. I'm just, because I, I love mowing the grass. No one can hear praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is loud, and I'm mowing the grass. And God stopped me, gave me an open vision. And I saw her come out of the house. And he looks at me, he goes, this is my daughter. She's perfect in my eyes, and you Amen. better take care of her. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. okay, she's mine. I was yeah. like, holy cow. So how God sees her is not how, how I saw, saw her. her, but I was stupid, right? Mm-hmm. And it actually took me, I think it took me five years after marriage to get over that. Yeah. Of getting over that bad thought process in my head of yeah. how I saw her. It took five years of me going over God's word and thinking, thinking finally, I, finally, I, finally, I got over the stupidity, right? Yeah. That, that's what it's got over stupidity because it's very stupid. It's very ignorant. Mm-hmm. But anyway, you got to grow up. So, but I was 27. I'm still a kid. But anyway, so I grew up. We got over it. And then I asked her to marry me about three weeks after that. We yes. came we came down to August a... August 6th, one night after the Believer's Convention. We were oh, at the Believer's geez. Convention here. And we went to the convention. And the convention was... And I went through up two or three times in the bathroom. Um, I had a migraine 90. headache. Uh, it was yeah, ninety-eight. It's ninety-eight. August sixth, and so and we actually went this year to the Blues Convention yeah. on August sixth, uh, and that was kind of cool. So at the same time that, so that we cool. celebrate, kind of fun. So I left Blues Convention and uh, oh, uh, and then went to um, took my took my wife. This is a funny story. Was going to drive her. Now, see, I'm a fun person country. If you don't understand that, go look up Mark Gunger, fun country. It's a blast. <laughs> so my, my, it's, it's okay. Person. My personality is, is I'm just going to go do it. It's going to work out. doesn't matter. I'm going to go do it. It's going to work out. Yeah. So, I, so I get in the car. I don't even know where Las Colinas is, but I'm going to find it. It's no big deal. It's right over there on the other side of Fort and Worth, we right? we don't have these yet. Yes, in 98. Right. So we no cell phones. in these. the middle of a really bad area that cops escorts. I pulled the cops, and I said, hey, where's Las Colinas? He goes, why are you in this neighborhood? I said, I can't find it. Follow me out of here. So we, we get over there, and uh, we walk around. Uh, we walk in because my parents set up a thing, a uh, picnic table. Not a table. Uh, Blanket with a heart basket, the whole bit in there. Oh, so I walk so around. We go over there, and I and again, fun country. I'm never nervous any time in my life. I don't get nervous. I don't get scared. That's just part of. It's not. It's not. I'm not some extra bold person. It's part of the fun country. So I'm like, eh, I don't care. So we get over there, and all of a sudden we get there, and all of a sudden everything disappears. Now I get nervous again. I'm like, do I kneel? Do I not moment. kneel? Yeah. What do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do. What do I do? So I'm like. I didn't know what to do. I paused. I pour a drink first. I kneel. I didn't know anything. So it's kind of funny. So then I ask her to marry me, and all she says is, Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. So when you get engaged. You should say yes. Oh, I, yeah. I said, uh uh-huh. Yeah, you did that too? I did the whole, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay. But so let me ask a question. When you got engaged, what's the next thing you did? 
Can you say it? Can you say it on podcast? Yeah, I. Well, you've said hot I, like five times. So I she kissed probably him. What you did? What I, I kissed him. You kissed him. Yes. You kissed him. I did. I kissed you him. You kissed him. I did. I asked why for a kiss. She said no. I'm like, <laughs> we just got engaged. <laughs> I said no because all I could imagine is if he kissed me and then we took a picture I was going to have lipstick all over the place that's a good that's a good I'm not going to make out with her I'm not going to just a little peck I know and she said no so that's my funny thing no I want a picture and he goes I should have known that's the other talking in movies and a ton of pictures I love that okay I love that's how we met so we got married so you've been married you've had kids how many kids do you have eight eight kids all of you guys are together in ministry. You and your children are all in ministry. You do it all together. Um, ministering and parenting, what are the joys and what are the struggles of doing that? I mean, can it get overwhelming having all of you together, doing what you do, having this ministry together? What is that like? Has it brought you guys closer? That, that kind of thing. Um, I think it has brought us closer. Um, our, we have our four, our, our four older kids are out of the house. And so one's a missionary, one, um, he and his wife are at CFNI, so Christ for the Nations. And my next one is at Christ for the Nations. And the fourth one is at um, Karis Bible College in, in Woodland Park, Colorado. Andrew Womack's Bible School. And so, um, so they're out of the house, and that's sad for me, of mm-hmm. course, and sad for him. Probably he's more sad than I thought he would be because... <laughs> Because he always told him, oh, just go on, do what God says. But now we're like, oh. Come back. Come back, <laughs> too. Yeah. And so, so that's hard. Um, but they, when we're a- around them, a lot of times we'll grab them and have them do ministry with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, and that's that's fun that they know how we're going to work. You know what I'm saying? They'd we we started, we, I, we've been in ministry my whole life. I took five years off at one point because we didn't. There's a lot we've learned over the last three years about hearing God's voice more, mm-hmm. following the Holy Spirit, not just doing what we think is right. It's a whole other topic, but anyway, and so, so but three years ago. he was in the ago, ministry when I met him. Right. Yeah. I, we mm-hmm. ministered a whole lot. I took five years off. Karina was about five. We stopped the ministry uh, just because of situations happened, and we got out, got into sales, mm-hmm. had lots of fun in sales, made lots of good money. Fun country people make easy money at sales because it's so <laughs> easy to sell. You talk to everybody. But it yeah. was fun. But so our four kids that are still at home, it's... That they just eat, sleep, and breathe it. They don't know. They don't know well, what it is to not six. jump up and say, "How can I help?" Jump. Well, actually, they don't. Yeah. actually, all eight of them. We've always been involved in ministry yeah. since forever, and so they all just do stuff. So when we're going to do it, they're doing it with us. So we're going to do it. So it's never. And we've told them it's not just mom and dad. It's it's all, all of you. us. And so, so how make, long has Way Missions been a thing? When, how, when was it that y'all did like came up with Way Mission specifically? Well, three years ago. Uh, four years ago? Almost. I can't remember what it was. In 2018, 19, mm-hmm. 18, 19? I don't remember. I don't remember the timeline. We have, we have like 25 pages of notes from 2018, 19. Um, we started church in Roanoke, Virginia because God told us to. We had some guy show up, started giving us money, just out of the blue, started handing me money left and right. 10, 20,000 months started handing me money. So God really blessed us, took care of us. Well, then I made a mistake. Um, that's what happens a lot of times when you when God starts blessing you, you think now God's blessing you. Well, He's blessing everything I'm doing. That's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> and so I thought well, I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do because God he, He's already backing me, so I'm doing what I think I'm gonna do. And so I made a few mistakes, hired wrong people. If you hire your wrong staff, it can blow your ministry. Yeah. Made a few mistakes, learned my lessons, how to follow God more closely, closely, mm-hmm. how to follow Him, do what He tells me to do, and that's kind of cool. So we started praying more, started praying, seeking God three hours a day, ten hours a day. Waking up in the middle of the night, spend two hours a day, every night just worshiping Gosh. God, praying, seeking yeah. God, saying, God, I need you, I need you, I need you. And all of a sudden, one day, we're going through the Bible, and I read in Acts 9 about, about Paul was on the way. And I thought, oh, it would be a good name for ministry, way. But we're going to have a church name, oh, whatever. And later that day, I told Rebecca, hey, you know, I saw, she goes, I saw the same thing. So a lot of times, I've seen that. And that's when, when, when we get some together, yeah. you know it's God. Because yeah. otherwise, together, separately, why well, think this? Why well, think this? Well, it doesn't come together. Well, then yeah. let's wait on the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. So we so we changed our name to Way Church then. Because I didn't know any better. Okay. Way Church, woo uh-huh. And then over spending more time with God. And I got away 
from prof- from prophecy when I was younger, because a whole lot of fake prophets came out. Even today, there's fake people out there. They're prophesying, I think you're called, and whatever it is. And I saw a lot of it in Bible school, a lot of fake people prophesying stuff. I'm like, this is wrong. So me and my friends, a lot of my friends went away from it because of all the goofy stuff. So we got away from it. And so we got back into it four years ago. But on the other side, I grew up in a pr- prophetic church, so I was just like, oh. Okay, I mean, like yeah, but still, a lot of it, a lot of it's wrong. No, but Um, it wasn't a point of contention between us. No, but I just kind of was like, well, I don't want to throw it out. But at the same time, I was like, but I'm going to honor my husband. And but there are some there even in that church she was raised in. There's some people that aren't aren't right, and so that really. I really, like Kent Hagen said, I threw the baby out with the bathwater, threw the whole thing out because I'm like, I don't, because I didn't handle it. I didn't like it. Yeah. And so four years ago, I got back into it and we met some true prophets that really heard from God. And God started giving our family dreams and visions. And we started seeking God more. And the more we saw, the more we talked to you. Mm-hmm. And so we have taught our family how to do that. And so that's why we started Way Missions. After three years ago, we, okay, we're doing this. Okay. Um, and, and so... We're gonna we'll delve into Costa Rica real quick, like we'll go that route right now. And I'm I'm learning through many people, even Kent and uh, and uh, Kent Copeland and Jerry Savelle, about growth. And I didn't hear that as a kid. For some reason, it didn't hit me. The growth in port. For some reason, all I heard was you got to have faith and you're gonna see a miracle. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, it never it never connected to me that that takes time. Yeah. It doesn't have to take 20 years. Right. It shouldn't take longer than three years. That's the longest it should take. Because that's how long Jesus here the disciples. It shouldn't take longer than three years in my personal growth, in my personal opinion. thought, okay? That's my own personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so I could be wrong there, but you should grow. Yeah. And you should grow pretty fast. It's just, it's just, trans- it's just renewing your mind, right? And mm-hmm. we all know it. Anyway, so in July of 2019, yep. July 2019, I am uh, asleep one night. and He's asleep. And I woke up being pounded on my, on my arm, this arm. And I was like, What? And I looked over at him, and he was eyes closed, propped up on his chest, you know, propped up on his hands in the middle of the night, like 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning. And he goes, Costa Rica, it's Costa Rica. And I said, what? We're moving to Costa Rica? He goes, yep, Costa Rica. I said, okay. And I just laid there waiting for him to say something else, but he just laid back down and continued sleeping. And I laid there waiting for him to say something Nope, nothing. So I just tried to go back to sleep, although I laid there wide-eyed for a little bit. Tried to go back to sleep, and I thought, surely he'll talk to me about it in the morning. He just wanted to tell me now. I mean, that's all I could think, right? And so I waited, nothing in the morning. About 10 o'clock, I said, you did something really weird yesterday or last night. He's like, what did I do? And I told him, and he goes, I didn't do that. I said, yes, you did. He goes, I I don't remember anything about that. I said, well, you did. So, So we started praying about that because that's what you do right I said we got to print out the map of Costa Rica we got to print out the map of where we live we need to pray over both of them and and um and see what God's showing us and so we did that for about a month and we and we contacted a friend down there talk to a friend down there yeah we contacted a missionary friend that is in a neighboring country and and uh and we talked about a month and talked about maybe going to see him and then there was nothing then it was just silent. And did you have children at that time? Oh, yes. Too? Well, this so 2019. So packing up everything and taking all of the kids. Right. We had How eight many? kids already. Eight? Yeah, we had six at home. Not that wow. Long ago. Yeah, wow. this only wow. three. Yeah. That was. And wow. so, we, so we, we prayed about it, and I got into a real depression. I am I am not depressed ever. And if you get depressed, I'm like, I want to slap you. So get over it. Just grow up. <laughs> Study with God. But when you fight against God, yeah. that's what depression comes out of that. You can't fight against God. And because I was like, God brought us to Roanoke. He brought this guy to get his money. We're never leaving Roanoke. I don't know if Costa Rica is doing anything. We might go visit, but we're yeah, not we leaving. We might go there on mission. Sure, we can be called there to mission. We're not leaving so Roanoke because God, in. all this money was coming in. There's no reason we're leaving here. And so when you fight against God, again, you God is God doesn't cause you depression, but the devil comes and attacks you because you listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you're trying to fight against God. And God's like, what are you doing, buddy? And so it took about six months, and it got really bad. And uh, I didn't take any drugs or anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't, no, I didn't take medicine yeah. for it. You know, I didn't make that. But I just got really, it was a hard time. And uh, and then we got out of it. Um, and there's a whole lot more of the story. I guess the story goes on forever. Went down there. Moved down there last 2020 for th- in the middle of COVID for three months. Oh, wow. Moved down there. How was that? Kids. Awesome. That was... It was, like, everything was good again, moving during COVID? Like, yeah, no problems. And we got... Go ahead, what you say? Costa Rica was not closed during COVID. Wow. Well, the country... 
that was the only country still open, which is cool to me. It's how it was the, Yeah, it's very cool. So we didn't have to take we didn't have to take the shot, didn't have yeah. to do anything. We had wow. to wear masks, but it was awesome. Right. But down there, we um, again going back into prophecy, mm-hmm. we met a Costa Rican pastor's wife that came knocked on our door one day and says, Hey, can I come in? And we're like, Sure. She came in there and she goes, You were here two for the first two weeks and God gave me dreams about you. Wow. And she started telling everything about us and she didn't speak English. And they're a wealthy family down there, which is important to me, not because they're wealthy, but they don't need money from us. Right. Yeah. You yes. go on a mission yeah, trip, something they want money yeah. from you. Yeah. And so I'm like, one church wanted us down there, but we didn't, but I was, wasn't comfortable. I wasn't comfortable there because yeah. I didn't like it. And she prophesied over us at our house, you're not here for to be in a church. You're here to to support other pastors. They're going to come to you. And so it's just, so we know what we're doing. And so in Back up a little going to Costa Rica. There's a whole lot more there. Anyways, there's a whole lot more God wants to do. It's really awesome. We're excited about it. There's a whole lot more dreams and visions, a whole lot of stuff God's told us. So we know we're going. We don't know how soon. We know it's going to open up. We just keep trusting God, keep praying over it, keep keep. Is there anything God. y'all can share that we can be believing with you guys? Or is things that sure. are there's, ahead that you're... Okay. I was going to share I'll share it now. But anyway, there is uh, back up. When, when this happened in July, in October... October, my son had a Our vision. Older son, older son yeah, had a vision. Know. He's down working in Naples, Florida at a private airport. And he had open, he goes, God, why am I working in the airport? Had an open vision of him running a, r- running an airport in a foreign country. And he said it was, it, it was surrounded by mountains. And so coming, that was, July had the vision. October, this happened. Fast forward December, I'm like, God, is this really real? Is this is this getting? Because now I'm going, are we really moving there? It took six months. But I'm like, God, is this is this really serious? So we, mm-hmm. we're seeking God more. And is there land for sale in Costa Rica with the runway ship? And there was one on the far southern side, but half it's on water, half in the mountains. And I'm like, okay, God, that's not what my son said. So I called my son. He had a girlfriend now before he got married. I said, Carson, t- draw me a picture of what you saw because I don't want to give him anything, right? right. Just tell me something. And he was like, he didn't call me for two days. I just called him. Tell me what you saw, you big idiot. Tell me what you saw. <laughs> quit, quit, quit talking to your girlfriend. Talk to me. And I didn't call him to him. Just playing. So tell me what you saw. And he goes, Dad, I, I saw this runway strip. On one part's mountains, one part's a body of water. I don't know if it's an ocean lake. I send the picture of what I found to go, Dad, that's what I saw in my vision. Wow. Wow. Okay, it's cool. So we, we, we so we fasted and prayed for five days. Another cool story. This is just, it's cool how when you seek God, how he answers. Yeah. We fasted five days, sought God. In the middle of it. We were having prayer one night, um, which we had every night with our family. This is during COVID. So we really took that time to delve into the Bible and Bible study and prayer every night um, with our kids. Um, And so we're sitting there praying, and Marshall prayed something. And then I prayed exactly what he prayed, because I I knew when I started off I was praying what he prayed. I prayed exactly what he prayed, and then out of me came, and I'm going to make my chocolate. And everyone bust out laughing. We just, (laughs) we're fasting, you're hungry, you're just, you're dreaming about chocolate. And I'm like... What? What are y'all laughing at? And they go, Mom, do you know what you just said? And I go, Yeah, I prayed what Dad prayed. And they go, After that, do you know what you just said? I go, No. And they said, You're gonna make his chocolate. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't so have we, a clue. So I looked so. up where can you go chocolate around, around the world? And there's a certain banner on the e you can go chocolate, and Costa Rica falls in that band. Oh, wow. And I'm like... Interesting. Yeah. So we get down there, we go, we got, and there's a whole... Oh, other, so we go to that airstrip. That's uh-huh. where we right. went. We're like, and there's okay. a whole other part of the story that we're skipping some of the story because we're running out of time here. Mm-hmm. We get down there, and uh, we, get, we check out the airstrip. We look at the land, a whole lot of money, but we don't care. God's got a lot of money. We don't care. Right. Yeah. So we come back. We go back down there in uh, a year later with our kids, with yeah. six of our kids. We all moved down there, had a blast. We saw miracles. We saw God do stuff. It was really cool. Um, we and we we saw a lot of cool stuff. And while we're down there, I kept on the spirit saying, "You're you're not you're missing something." And I keep looking. I can't find anything. Finally, I found a realtor from Colorado who lives down there now. And I said, "Hey," I said, uh, "Look at this land." He goes, "I got some land near there." No, we're in the ownership. What's near there? I said, no, I want to be near the runway. He goes, well, uh, it's on the other half runway strip. Half the runway strip has the other land. The other half has the other land. And we go down there, and I've, I've studied cacao, which is how you make chocolate cacao. Mm-hmm. I've studied this all. I know not know everything about it, but I've looked a lot, a lot yeah. at it. The the other land we're looking at already has property on there. Already, already has has buildings. Has on building. There. He has a he has or has a hangar already permitted out. All this kind of stuff all set up, ready to go. So you can start building stuff, and it's already he already has 
places to live on there, but he has other places set up permits for it because it's in a reserve area. You have to have permits. He knows everything. Yeah. And you can't grow cacao on the ocean side because salt water destroys cacao. And so the way this land is set up is like a hundred and some acres on this side over mountain range, there's 25 acres over there that you can grow cacao on. And you can't grow cacao on more than 25 acres at a time. It can't support it. They've tried around the world. And so it's like a cool, all this cool spot. So they want four and a half million dollars for it right now. And so if you're gonna pray for that, pray for that to come in and pray for God to open the doors up for that and all that kind of stuff. And so that's kind of right right now. Because what we want to have, other than just growing cacao, is we want to have a place where people can come get quiet before the Lord, almost like, like a, a retreat, retreat center. I yeah. love that. Come for a week, a month, and it's got a restaurant on the property. It's got everything. And so... Um, but we're going to make it a prophecy school. Yeah. We're going to show people how to walk out what God is showing them. We just saw this Monday with our kids. I'm going to share this quick little story, and then we can we can be done. No, but um, but on fine. but on but on Monday, uh, Pastor Justin on Sunday, okay. what is true fast? Well, my family fasts all the time. Mm-hmm. So Monday we fast. I said, well, let's follow. I mean, it got inside of me. Let's follow Pastor Justin's sermon. Let's just not just fast to suffer the soul. Mm-hmm. Let's like do something. So I want to give food away to somebody. Listen, but nothing worked out. Everybody talked to the church. Nobody helped me out. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> but there's a reason for it. Because There's God a wants reason because God wants to do. Right, you, I'm trying to do what I want to do, and God's like, just quit asking people and listen to me. Yeah. So anyway, and so that morning we got up and uh, we we were fasting on Mondays. So we worshiped and prayed, and then uh, and then I talked about Ananias, how Paul told Ananias. That's what that's what God put in my heart. Do what I want you to do. I'm going to tell you exactly where to go. So I shared that, and as soon as I started talking, when I said we're going to be led like Ananias, and God's going to show us. Who to go talk to? Where to go to? Kerastine and and um, and Kit Kat both had an open vision of God, wow. but then we prayed about it. Then they came back. They said, "Well, we both got something." And uh, Kit Kat just had a saw green, okay, green. Kerastine saw a smoking pipe. I'm like a smoking pipe. I'm like, and now we've learned over the last three years. When my kids say something, they're prophets. When they say something, you listen. You don't yeah. blow it off and say, yeah. "Well, you know no what I'm talking about." Age. No exactly. matter their age. They can hear God's voice. Kagan's 8, yes. 8, 10, 12, and 13. 13. So they all hear from God. So they all know when when you get when you get them alone and they listen to God, they hear from God. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, whatever. And Kit Kat goes, well, you know, I think there's an emerald, an emerald green, emerald street. He says, sure. So I look on the map, emerald street. Well, let's go for a drive. We're all going to go for a drive. We'll just see what happens to get over there. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit tells me, we'll look more. So I keep looking. Emerald street restaurant, it runs into green oak. Green oh, Green. Oh, Green Boulevard. Oh, Whatever. Okay, cool. All right. I wonder if there's a pipe store on Green Road. And there is. Wow. So we drive over there, and I go in, and a lady buying something, and uh-huh. she leaves, and I start talking to lady, and I call my wife in there. It's a lady, so I want my wife to come in there, because yeah. I'm not going to be without my wife in there. Yes. And she, we just minister. She cries. We pray for her. Tell her how much God loves her. Praise God. And it was cool. And that's what Isaiah 58 says, is you break the bonds of the wickedness over the... Uh, somebody, I don't know how it's phrased. You can... Do whatever you want to say. Anyway, anyways, whatever, whatever Justin preached on Sunday. Yeah. Isaiah 58. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Pastor Justin. Pastor Justin. Sorry. Brother, Bishop, Pastor Justin. Anyway, <laughs> so, so whatever. But, but so anyway, so that's what God does. Yeah. And when you listen, He moves. Amen. And so anyway, so we know where we're going. We don't know when we're getting there, how we're getting there. We've been there once. We've been there twice already. Scout the land out. Our kids are excited about it. They miss all the time. So we're going back as soon as God says go. And yeah. so we are waiting for that that moment. And when we are traveling and when we're in Texas, we get to be part of Heritage of Faith when we're in Texas. Which so we love. love we, we love too. having you guys. They do so many skits. They do so many songs. They do worship for us in the kids' ministry. They do it all. They're it's amazing. A blast. So it's y'all a blast. are a blessing to us, and I'm always bragging on you to Pastor Justin. I'm like, they're such a blessing. Addie all loves the time. when y'all are in there. She does. Yes. She she loves seeing y'all. So with all of that being said, we are in agreement with you for everything that you're believing God amen. for. Amen, amen. And all the visions and the things that He's given you. Amen. We sit in agreement with you all. Amen. With that, like um, Brother Jesse says, all I'll be your two. So I think one, two, three, four will be your four. We'll be your four on that. It's awesome. And our motto here at Heritage of Faith is making winners in life. What does that mean to you? And what does winning in life look like for you and your family? Well, that, that's our, that's, my wife says it the best when we go preach at a church. She says when she opens up, what do you say about families? Oh, about what I, I right. should be doing with our kids? 
Um, I'd say that we're, we're Way Missions and that um, our biggest goal as a family is to make sure that my kids know how to reach the heart of the Father and how to have communion with Him, how to, how to hear His voice. And if we're not doing that, then we're not doing as a family what we're called to do. And then we bring that to others because um, there's lots of families that don't do that. Yeah. And so we want to be an example of... And we, when we go minister at a church, we haven't done it here because it's not the same. We're not like coming as a guest minister. We're just here at church hanging out. Yeah. When we go somewhere, we tell every pastor, we want to hang out with you and your family. Yes. Because we're going to have worship with your family so your kids see what my kids are doing. Yeah. So it imitates onto them and, or, or example and of them. it's not that our kids are any better, believe me. No. They're normal kids. They're still kids. They still argue and fight. They still disobey at times. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're, not, they're not some angels that never make mistakes. But um, no, but what you're saying is, is that family is the core, and it is the family first when it comes to ministry. And so yes. the fact that you're exemplifying that to your children, that's an example to so many other ministers in the right. body, to so right. many other families. And so I love that because that is truly what makes winners in life. So that's right. the perfect example, and that's yeah. what we want to do. Yes, everything yes. else is fun. All the other ministry we get them preach, we blah 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 blah. That's all fun. But the most important thing is because that's what I've always said forever. I want to be like Philip. I want to say about my kids what it says about Philip's kids, how his daughters were prophetesses. I can never say prophetesses. I never get that. Prophetess. Well, single, plural is hard. But anyway, so I want my kids to be known about that, that they are men and women of God. Yes. And all of my kids, from Karina on down to the littlest one, they all hear God's voice. They all know how to flow in the Spirit. They all listen to the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want all of my kids to do. Praise so. God, because then they'll know what direction to go because they'll hear his voice because they'll, exactly. they'll recognize it. They'll pick up on exactly. it and they'll know yep. their plan. That's yep. awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. And in the show notes, you'll find a link to their website, waymissions.com. We encourage everybody to go and to visit that, to support their family and pray about how you can be a blessing to them. So thank you all again You're for welcome. being You're here. Thank you for having us. Here. Yes. Oh my goodness, that was such a fun conversation with the Frasers. We really hope that it blessed you. Come back next week, church family. We have so many great episodes. They drop every Friday. Um, We look forward to having you listen again. See you later.